I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this Cisco certification video practice exam, which is also going to serve as quite a review for Telnet passwords and privilege levels. If you're not familiar with privilege levels, you will be by the end of this particular video practice exam. What we're going to do today, instead of having a couple of multiple choice questions and then bringing up the routers and switches and looking at the answers live, which is what we usually do, I'm going to present you with a scenario here on the board in just a few seconds. So you may want to grab something to write with. And also I do recommend that if this is the first time you've watched this particular video, go ahead and get ready to solve it. Pause the video when we're getting ready to go solve it on the routers and switches and write out your answer on paper, put it in notepad, I don't care how you do it, but do go ahead and attempt to solve this because this is the kind of question you want to get practice with before your exam and certainly this is the kind of thing we're going to see in the real world as well because as I always tell aspiring networkers and students you know multiple choice is fine but when we're in front of the routers and switches we're not going to get any multiple choice no one's going to come to you and say hey solve this for me do this for me and do you want to do a b c or d so we've got to be ready for this kind of question and this is definitely a real world scenario you want to allow three separate users to telnet into your router and we want to use the three username password combinations that you see there on the board and I know that you would never use the password admin for the username admin, right? You would never do that? Good. That's what I wanted to hear. Now, we want the admin user to be placed into enable mode immediately upon a successful Telnet login. The other user should be placed into user exec mode. So how are we going to accomplish that? Again, feel free to pause the video, take a few minutes, write your answer out, and then come back and see how we did it. Because we're also going to review some Telnet information here as well. We're going to be working between routers 1 and 3, which are communicating over frame relay. You can see the config there on router 3. It's a very simple config. You can also see at the bottom the VTY line configuration that I put on there before we began this particular lab. This is not the default. I'll show you what the default is in just a moment for Telnet. But you can see that I've set a login command and a password of Cisco. It does not matter in which order you configure those commands on the VTY lines as long as you configure them both. The only thing I don't like about this, even though you're going to see plenty of it in the real world, it's what I call a one-size-fits-all password. Anybody who sees that password, say, over your shoulder, in a network room is going to be able to come back later and telnet in. They're not even going to be prompted for a username. There's just one password and that's it. Now let's go over to router 1. This is where we're going to be telnetting from. And before we get too far into it, let me show you what that default is. And again, I'll just show you nothing tricky here, nothing up my sleeve. We just got serial zero running uh, frame relay there, a couple of map statements to get us up and running. And this is the default for the VTY lines, nothing. There is no telnet access via default on a Cisco router, which is really good because we don't want people telnetting in if we uh, don't know who they are. So what happens now, I'm going to try pinging it first. You always make sure you've got connectivity before you try to do anything else. We do. So what's going to happen when I try to telnet to this router? Well, it does open, user access verification comes up, it's prompting me for a password. And notice when I typed in the password, the cursor did not move. That is normal and expected behavior. You may be used to some other vendors where you, know, you see asterisks go across as you're typing in a password, but you're not going to see that with telnetting on Cisco. Now, we're at the R3 prompt, but we're in user exec. And as you probably know at this point in your studies, you really can't do a lot from here. So we probably want to go into enable mode. And you're not going to be able to because I did not set an enable password on router 3. And I've run into that too when you're telling anyone, it's like, yeah, I got all that set up. I put a password on there. I'm the only one who knows it. And then all of a sudden you're trying to tell that in at 2 in the morning and you realize you didn't set an enable password. So I'm going to exit out of that. And now I'm back on router 1. I stayed on router 1, but we telnetted R3. Let's go back to router 3 and take a look at some solutions for that. Now what I could do here is just set an enable password, and then whoever telnets in 
would need to enter that particular enable password. I could do that, but what I may choose to do instead is set a default privilege level or change the default privilege level for the VTY lines. And if I set this to 15, that means that when a user telnets in successfully, they're going to be put into privilege mode or, ex or excuse me, enable mode by default. So that's a handy little command. I'll go ahead and save that when we go to router one. And now I'm going to telnet back over to router three. It opens up. I'm asked for a password. I'll put in Cisco. And now notice the prompt is totally different. I was put directly into enable mode because I put privilege level 15 on the VTY lines on the router to which I was telnetting. <clears throat> Excuse me. And scrolling back up, you will notice that's what we were looking at before. We were in user exec mode, but then I went to router 3, put the privilege level 15 command on, and now any user that telnets in and knows the password will automatically be put into enable mode. So I'll go ahead and log out of that connection. Now there are a couple of things again that I'm not too crazy about when it comes to this particular configuration. There's a good chance you'll see it on your exam. There's an even better chance you'll see it in the real world because it's kind of common. But anyone who knows that password, and unfortunately they're pretty easy to guess sometimes, like say the password Cisco, not only are they not going to be challenged for a username, but they are also going to be put straight into enable mode because of that privilege level 15. Now that's a handy command in a home lab when you don't want to keep typing enable passwords in, but you want to be careful using that in the real world because that's giving somebody the keys to the kingdom, so to speak, if they just know that one simple password. What I prefer to do, and what you should be ready for on your exams as well, is to create a database of usernames and passwords where you're assigning a password to a username as you go along, and you can also assign that privilege level 15 to certain users while not assigning it to other users. Okay, so that's what we can do, and let's go back to that scenario for just a moment. And that's exactly what we want to do here. That's what the question's asking us to do, is to put the admin user straight into enable mode, and then have the other two users put into user exec mode. So that's what we're going to tackle now. First off, I'm going to go ahead and take off what we just put on there. Most of the time it's just as simple as doing that and we'll do a no login. And I'm going to go ahead and save that and now we're going to configure router 3 with uh, a username password database and then we'll test what we've done. Now first off here before we get started on that I want to get you over any anxiety you have about creating a Cisco database. You know that sounds complicated and obviously there are other types of databases out there that can get very complicated but here all we're going to do is use the username password command to create a local database so it's not complex as all, at all uh, as you're going to see actually on the second part of this video because we do have a 10 minute time limit on YouTube and if we do it all now we're going to run well over that. So thank you for taking a few minutes to watch this video with some important review and in the next part of the video which will be right next to this one on YouTube and on my blog as well we can see how we're going to solve this particular scenario. So I will see you there. I'm Chris Bryant CCIE number 12933 and I'll see you over on part two.